if my goal is to get a customer for 10 years, then we should focus sales to think how can they get this customer for 10 years from the get-go. Our mm-hmm. product, how to build products, some features this year, some features next year, some a big new product in three years for that customer to get more and more and more value to stay for 10 years. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley, in partnership with Lomitech, and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel. Let's talk about an obsession for customer success. And there's nobody better to do it with than Ziv Pellet, Chief Customer Officer of AppsFlyer. Ziv knew he wanted to work in high tech since he was 13. He got closer and closer every summer break. Year after year, people gave him a chance to do more and learn more. He hopes he's paying his debt today. In his 20 plus years, he mostly worked on customer facing and he truly loves the relationship companies develop with their customers and the importance of it in B2B SaaS. Ziv Pellet, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders all the way from the Apps Flyer offices. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Employee number seven in the amazing Apps Flyer, one of Israel's greatest prides, uh, you know, the go-to tool for really any marketer in the world. And uh, one of the things that I'm so excited to be speaking to you about is this new domain that seems to have really given room in the tech space over the last few years. And today I, I hear it maybe 10 times a day, this idea of customer success. You're the chief customer officer of Apps Flyer. I don't believe that title was a common one even three, four years ago. And so Ziv, even before we dig deep into customer success and the incredible things that you've done at Apps Flyer, growing from two people to 200 people on your team, tell me about your journey. How do you end up in Apps Flyer and how do you learn about yourself through different milestones in your life? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a great question. Uh, I started to work at iTech very early. So I got my first shot uh, at uh, 13. Uh, someone uh, asked me if I can uh, fix uh, speakers and I said yes. I didn't know how to fix spe- speakers back then, but I did try and think uh, I was successful in that summer fixing 20, 25%. Uh, and they were happy about that. And then, uh, you know, I think every year around uh, summer break, someone gave me a shot. And uh, first of all, it, 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 I, I learned so much. Every year I learned 2x, 4x the, the, the year before. At some point I was researching areas uh, for uh, R&D, just helping someone. Then I did QA, and then I learned so much around many, many things. I think that the best things I learned that I didn't want to be a programmer. Uh, and then uh, at some point, I, I really understood that I want to work with customers. I want to work. Uh, I want to understand technology. I, I do understand technology very deep, and then, but I love working with customers. And for the first um, eight years, I did work in telecommunications. Eight years after the army, I worked in telecommunications, and and it was a very long relationship with the customer, and the, and, the, and it was pre-customer success era of that the relation that relationship was I'll, I'll define it slow, very slow. You know, mm. the first of all the RFA, RFP, you could have lost, you could have lose a, a deal after two years of work, and then if you if you want it, then you had two, three, four years of work after that and developing that relationship. Sometimes the customers did relate to you, sometimes they didn't. But customer success came for B2B SaaS, came when everything is connected and customers can onboard in two weeks or two days. And also after they onboard, we know everything about them. We know their usage, we know their level of engagement, So and we know who should we engage with, who is the best uh, per person in the customer, you know, always I look at four types of people in the customer side, the value user, the valued user, the champion, the decision maker, and then uh, executive, of course. And then I, I think this is fascinating because, you know, if even if I work now 20 years, I will not be able to end my de- the development of customer successes. I see it every year. We develop it more and more. And uh, I, I, I said a lot in the last month that I feel that in the last two years, 
I'm more of a chief strategy officer, chief technology officer of the customer success department, of the client's services department. And, and I think this is, this is my true passion today. Incredible. Take me back to, I believe it was 2013, employee number seven, yeah. Apps Flyer. You're joining this incredible company. Do you understand the magnitude this is going to reach within eight years? Is this, Absolutely you know, not. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the first thing, and it's the funny part, is that I had two opportunities and I selected AppsFire that was uh, not the best compensation out of the two. And when I joined and for the first 15 days, I didn't understand what the product does. So when I selected <laughs> AppsFire, I truly didn't mm -hmm. understand what the product is doing. And then um, I think what was fascinating about my first six, 12 months is that for the first time in my life, I saw inbound demand. Pure, beautiful inbound demand conversions end to end from just getting the lead to having the customer on, 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 on and running two days, three days, 10 days, depends how, how passionate was the customer to get the, that value. But everyone, had, everyone needed that attribution piece. And, and it was very, very easy for us to deliver that. And, and it, it, it was beautiful in many, many uh, areas. First of all, or Oren, the CEO, he knew that he's, he's hiring this. The next department is, is customer success. He called it customer success in the end of 2013. And he didn't hire sales for 18 months. Wow. We were working on leads. We were converting leads. And we continued to work with the customer. And that was, that was so beautiful, so natural. And, and it created a great relationship with the, with the beginning of that portfolio, which were mainly small customers, sometimes micro. And, you know, once a month, twice a month, mediums. But the, the amazing thing about AppStar is that a lot of those small customers grew with us. And then ah. we became stronger and we brought the mediums and we bought more small, and then they grew with us. So the negative churn of AppStar is the negative churn of our ecosystem, the ecosystem of the mobile app install marketing. Uh, Incredible. Yeah. And now, Ziv, I wanna, I, I have way too many things that I wanna, that I wanna touch on. So I'm gonna move forward, and I, and I want us to now do zoom out a little bit, and then we'll zoom back in. Customer success versus sales. This new, this new concept of relationship building. What does that actually mean in its essence, customer success, in, in you know, the most tangible, basic sense of the word? Yeah. In, in B2B SaaS, I believe that, um, that, that there's a concept, there's a notion from Salesforce that when they, they have a customer and the customer grows to a certain stage, to a certain size, they call it customer for life. I think for B2B SaaS, if you are a mission-critical product, if you bring a lot of value and customers need you de definitely on a daily basis, you need to get to that concept. You need to think about, about it in that thinking framework. It is, these are customers for life. And the same for the growth of those customers. Sometimes those customers start small. They just need two seats now and those two features, but they will grow to 10 and five features and they will grow to 100 and, and the entire suite. I, I think it's, it's, really it's really important to understand the value that the customer needs now and to act on it. And I see a, a, a must change in the world of sales. So I'll be happy to speak a little bit about it. The, the focus should be customer success. But I think that if you look at the company, at the, at the average B2B SaaS company now that is uh, older than five years, most of the departments think B2B SaaS think long term. Some departments, some departments in some companies, you'll find that they are, they are not. Mm -hmm. Sales usually with very short term goals, quotas for the quarter. It's not B2B SaaS. It's not, you know, in the end, we the B2B SaaS companies, departments, every department. If, if optimal, you, you should have one goal for the company. Should work like VCs. Mm -hmm. You you get lots of lots of lots of small customers, mm -hmm. and you grow them. And some yield more, some yield less. But in the right. end, you want you to yield 
the 120 to 140 net dollar retention. So more tangibly for somebody who's starting a new uh, company or is growing their sales team or is rethinking now whether they're doing the right approach, short-term versus long-term, what, what does this translate to for the, for the CEO that has to make a decision on how to, how to now navigate their sales team? And the easiest fast. way to translate it is yep. if my goal is to get a customer for 10 years, then we should focus sales to think how can they get this customer for 10 years from the get-go. Our mm-hmm. product, how to build products, some features this year, some features next year, some a big new product in three years for that customer to get more and more and more value to stay for 10 years. Right. But then what is the trade-off? The trade-off is sometimes you, you go a little bit slower on the revenue in the mm. short term. So right. I, th- th- think about a good salesperson. A good salesperson can sell a company that needs a, some value for X. They can sell it for 2X. Mm-hmm. But in B2B SaaS, it translates to a, 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 a very big potential for either downgrades or churn in the, in the end of the first year. Because mm-hmm. that customer needed only 1X for 1X. They only needed that amount of value for 100,000. Right. But if you sold them for 200,000, so they might look for something uh, cheaper, they might look for something alternative. They, they might, you might just emotionally feel uh, uh, not v- very negative about that, that uh, I bought something for, for 200K, but right. I, didn't use, I didn't use half of it. Or so. Right, so you, you've seen and have been a critical factor in growing the, growing the customer success team I guess from being the first of two employees to uh, to 200, as you're growing strategically this division within a marketing you know, company, B2B SaaS, what is, what is your strategy? So what, if, if I were to ask now, you know, any of the 200 people that are working in customer success at AppsFire, what, what is the grand strategy that, that Zeev employed as he was building this team over the last eight years? Yeah, so I, I, I'm 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 fortunate to, that four three and a half years ago, uh, we wrote a mission statement, and we have vision, and we we are saying it all the time. We are saying it all the time, uh, over and over. Uh, and it's uh, listen, learn, and help customers achieve their desired outcomes while building long term relationships. And it focuses you on the fir- on the on the two main core things. That we do. We mm. want to help customers get the value that they bought, and if successful, we want to build a very long. I also say a lot deep. We want to identify. So we, if we work in a very with a very big customer, and hundreds of people will use our product, all the marketeers, the data will flow to other other departments. But in the end, there's four, five, six. There's people that we need to build a significant relationship with. And that will help us to understand what they achieved, what they didn't, what are their KPIs, what are their challenges, what can we do more? Because if you think about Upstar, if you think about my eight years and the the 10 years of the company, it started with giving, providing marketeers with a great value for uh, user acquisition. Two years right. later, we started to give value also for re-engagement right. and then for segmentation and then for anti-fraud. And then, so th- th- there's over the, when, it, when a company is successful, then it has a lot of opportunities to grow. It can be in your building block and it can be to other building blocks. I think the more successful companies did that in the one building block. Mm-hmm. And at some point when they really blow up, then they build another building block. I think right. we, we've done that pretty successfully and and growing the team to 200 people you know obviously today the one thing that i hear from especially you know every startup possible every company hiring talent it's almost impossible um what 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 was your strategy there so you know one of the, one of the things that i heard you speak about previously is this idea of opportunistic hiring uh which i don't believe it's a mainstream concept yet but it, but it probably will be what w- tell me about your idea of opportunistic hiring and how that may have helped you reach the 200 people 
Yeah. So first of all, I think that the, the, the success of the department is, is really hiring. Hiring is key. Hiring from the get-go, uh, um, really, you know, uh, pushing the bar uh, every year. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's that's critical. Second, I'll I'll, I'll say that um, you 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 need to, again in hiring. You are developing a very short uh, relationship for eight, nine, ten hours, and then both sides needs to decide if it's if it's a go. Right. So I think that it's, this is critical. So both the candidate and the company. On nine nine hours, we need to decide, and it's like it's trust from both sides. It's like, like you didn't see any value. I'm telling you what is the value of upside. I'm telling you what you'll do, but it's only about that trust uh, from both sides. And I think that it's it's a lot about uh, culture. So I, I think we were very fortunate to hire amazing people from the get go that became leaders. Uh, because we were successful globally, we also hired people in all, you know, it's, it's, I think now we have people in the, from 25 nationalities in 16 offices. Wow. Uh, so from China to San Francisco. And, and I think that is the, the, the diversity of that and understand, you know, understanding of how to hire people in San Francisco versus hiring people in, in Beijing. It's so different. Uh, but and I think that you know and and you can see that our it's 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 validated that our our hiring is successful because not only I was a senior customer success manager when I started and grew to be the chief customer officer uh, out of fifty leaders today in client services, including the customer support team, um, I think uh, four or five were hired from the outside as managers. <laughs> the rest wow. were customer success managers or customer support engineers and grew up, including all VPs. Uh, no, the, only, the, only the new SVP that we hired from in the U.S. now was hired from the outside. But and, and, and I think that, you know, something that I'm very proud of is that we have more women than men and we have more women in leadership. And uh, I even believe in, in senior leadership uh, in customer success. I'm still, I'm still working on that in customer support. <laughs> I, I love that. Now, this idea that I, that I hear you talk about hiring without a specific task knowing. So I, what I mean to say is opportunistic hiring. You're get, hiring somebody based on, their, based on who they are, their potential, not based on the task that you have to fulfill tomorrow. That's something that you know, I heard you speak about that I think is just very inspiring and it's something that I'm taking to heart as I'll be building my venture is this is is this something that took place at Upfire? Yeah, definitely. You, you know, um, when I hire a CSM, that I, I need them for two for the next two years to be a customer success manager. But it depends when when we hire. It's like in the beginning, so customer success were salespeople. They mm-hmm. converted customers. They were. I always say, and I'll say it again. They were both routers and firewalls. <laughs> so. You're a 20 people company or 30 people company, and you have four CSMs in the right. field working with customers, getting 20 requests a week. Like, if we are not routers and firewalls, then we will bring all those 20 requests into the company, and then 20, 30 people will do a, a lot of things around those requests. So, a good customer success manager has some kind of firm, firmware on their, uh, on their router or firewall. And then when they see a very important request that can be critical also for our product, for our product development, then they bring it in. But mm-hmm. the rest, they said that they set a good expectation with the customer saying, right. okay, that this is maybe something we'll do early next year. But uh, wow. we, we, we wrote it. But, and I think that the set of expectations is also something that we, we teach and, and we, we say a lot about. Because in the end, you know, Sometimes people, they, they try to postpone telling negative things to customers. Like, so the customer waits and then gets the negative. Right. But if you set the expectation now and you give the negative now, at least you uh, spare them the, the waiting. And I think it's also, it builds m- much more, uh, m- a faster trust. with the, uh-huh. So they understand, like, we communicate right. whatever we can. We can do that. We will not be able to do that. And, or maybe, you know, sometimes we are not the platform that does that part. 
Right. Which is super important. You know, I think a lot of people are talking about aha moments or wow, wow moments in the, you know, in the, in the user journey. And this is also speaking to the B2B, uh, uh, B2B customers. Uh, but I guess that the, what, you're ta- what you're saying now about setting expectations early can also save you from the bad aha moments and the bad surprises. Uh, and, you know, surprises are fantastic when they're good and they're horrible when they're bad. And, and so I'm definitely taking this to heart. And Ziv, I really want to thank you for coming. 20 minutes go by way, way too fast. And I have too many more questions to ask you. But I want to transition to talk a little bit more about Ziv. Uh, and I want to take you back now to your childhood, before Apps Flyer, before everything. What really fascinated you as a kid, as you were just roaming the earth and curious child? What what really got you going? It was absolutely TV. I was truly fascinated. I could spend eight, ten hours in front of the TV. And, you know, sometimes uh, these days that uh, people say uh, about screens and, and kids, I, I, I love my, ki- my kids uh, watching screens. You, you need to make sure that you want to uh, direct the content. Right. Uh, but I, I think screens are great. I, I, I got here through screens. Right. I love it. And source of inspiration today. What inspires you today as you're going by day by day? There's, there's many, many things. So I, I, I follow many people uh, and how they speak and, and how they think. Uh, it can be Simon Sinek, can be mm-hmm. uh, so many books that that uh, that I listen to. I, I almost not read. I always I use Audible. Um, so I think Jeff Bezos uh, inspired me a lot. Uh, you know, it's it's funny that uh, th- this company Appstar, a lot of the roots uh, of building this company, Oren and uh, uh, Lisa and Reshef, they brought from Zappos, from the book, mm-hmm. from Tony Shea. Yeah. I didn't know Tony Shea until he passed away. Uh, but I I know everything from that book from that and and then I read I heard the book uh, after he passed away and him him speaking the book in Audible I think it's much much stronger than reading it and and it's so many things that we have done and so many things that we 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 will do in the future and amazing it's remarkable really remarkable I got a chance to briefly meet Tony in downtown well, Las Vegas where Zappos was located. And it was uh, one of those experiences for a young entrepreneur that I'm going to take with me for a long time. And I encourage everybody to go read his book about making customers happy. And I think it's going to be fantastic. And uh, the last question, but not least, three words that you would use to describe yourself. Uh, Relationship, trust, and responsiveness. Relationship, trust, and responsiveness. And that reminds me that we didn't even get to touch on your obsession now to building relationships as, as a key strategy. Uh, so we're going to be saving this for another episode. But Ziv, thank you for the, for the wonderful time. Uh, congratulations on, on amazing, amazing things with Apps Flyer. Really one of the biggest prides that we have here in, in, in the ecosystem and one of the most amazing companies in the world. And, and looking back at these eight years and starting to understand your personal strategy and Apps Flyer strategy, through its customer relationships, I think that's remarkable. And I'm going to take a lot of lessons with me for my own ventures. So thank you very much and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you for having me. Of course. 